Hi guys, and welcome back to Maltbox, the non-chill filtered whiskey blog. I'm Andy and I'm back here today with another whiskey review. And yes, it's another English whiskey review. Uh, I'm actually not straying too far from home. I'm hopping over a couple of counties over into Derbyshire. Now, Derbyshire is home to White Peak Distillery. I don't recall having reviewed their inaugural release on the channel, which is very, very naughty of me, and I'll probably have to go back and do that if I haven't already. I'm excited about this one because I've not tried this yet. I'm looking at it, it's still closed, it's still got the wrapping around it and everything, so I'm opening this with you. Now, White Peak Distillery is really cool, operates from an old wire works on the River Derwent. I think it's the River Derwent, could be wrong. But ultimately, it's a nice, nice distillery in Derbyshire. Um, <laughs> And the fact that we've seen so many options for English whiskey is outstanding. I mean, if you look behind me, I've just put a bottle on the shelf that arrived today, which is the Bimba um, Queen's Jubilee edition. So I'll be opening that pretty soon, which will be cool. Um, there are some other English whiskies knocking about in boxes, but again, a lot of them are still in storage. I've got about 20 bottles of English whiskey in storage, about 50 miles away from where I am at the minute. So I'm having to kind of work with what I've got. But this release, is very, very recent indeed. I think this only came out maybe the end of June, start, I mean, I'm recording this in the start of July. Um, I think technically the batch bottling date was around April 22 or March 22, however, it's only been released just now. And it's this, it's Wireworks Small Batch. And Wireworks is the name of the White Peak whiskey range. And something I just noticed actually, which is pretty cool, look how cloudy that whiskey is. Hopefully that trans translates, but maybe it doesn't from where you are. Maybe I have, to, I have to shine a light behind it, but I can't because I'm using my phone to record and the ring light. Uh, yeah, it's a cloudy whiskey a little bit. It's a little bit of a haze to it, which is pretty cool. Um, so White Peak, just to give you a bit of a lowdown. Old wire works, hence wire works. They utilize a slightly peated spirit. They generally use a bit like a few other distilleries, namely quite a lot of new distilleries, um, a combination of bourbon and STR, so uh, stripped, toasted, recharred. Uh, casks for the majority of their releases. This is a vatting of both ex bourbon and STR casks. Do you know how I know that? Well, I'll tell you guys because they put the information on the side of the bottle and there is that information for you. Now it is slightly foiled. Um, so hopefully you can read the writing on there and I'm not moving it about too much. But ultimately what this tells us is this bottle of 46.2% batch 0322. So that could be the third batch in 2022 actually rather than the Mar March 22 because there was the inaugural release, there was then heavily peated release or over smoke I think it was called which I didn't end up getting a bottle of because I couldn't get hold of one um, and this one maybe that is what it is hmm I'll have to ask so there's 4,323 bottles which is great because I think this one's going to be a bit more easily attainable I bought this from a great little independent shop in Manchester called Tipples uh, which is which is a really nice little shop um, now, it's kind of in the name, small batch. It's, it's a little bit of an overused term, I think, but 4,000 bottles is relatively small in the scheme of things. It's very different from a single cask, which you're limited to, you know, upwards, well, downwards, I guess, of 400 or so bottles, perhaps. Um, and the fact that we've reduced strength here as well, 46.2%. Now, all the other releases so far have been over 50. So I think they've tried to eat this one out a little bit more, make it a little bit more readily available, probably more of a core release but i don't want to speak for the guys at white peak when i say that so here we go let's open this bad boy <laughs> i knew that happened let's open this and he's like i can't open this there we go it's that damn plastic that's why foil please next time um so yeah nice little uh neck leaflets I, I i never know what to make of neck leaflets i like the idea of the the information they contain but i always find like it's a little bit of a whiskey swing ball they always seem to get in the way i'm like like a little cat just like oh 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 hello um ball pop first time the court's gone 
like the sound of that and what else I like as well which I will show you in a minute is how stunning this bottle is it's got to be and I think I've said this on social media before as well this has to be one of the most attractive looking bottles on the market it's up there I, I really liked Lindor's Abbey kind of art deco feel this has got that combined with if you look at that the detail at the top so you see how it starts to twist so you've got the straight lines and then it twists up at the top. That's because that's representing the old use of the building, the wire works. That's what they used to do. You get strands of cable and you tie those together in a strand and you get yourself a wire or a cable, which is just great. I really love that touch. It's the little things like that I really, really like. And it's so nice to actually see the word England on the side of a whiskey bottle as well. I always find that very, very nice indeed. So again, lightly peated style we're looking at here. 46.2% STR and ex-bourbon casks. It's only been out of the bottle for a moment. This retails uh, for around 55 to £60. Pounds. So let's talk about that, shall we? Because... Yes, you could say that is expensive when you compare it to some more readily available aged Scotch whiskies. Um, and I, I kind of always have to fight English whiskies corner on, on pricing. But, you know, the guys at White Peak, whilst it's quite unique in the English whiskey scene in a sense they've got quite a lot of on-site storage they've got quite a lot of room unlike say bimba for example who's very limited and a lot of bimba's whiskey is actually located up in i think birmingham uh, in a warehouse in birmingham um which is obviously not london whereas you know the guys at white peak have a lot of room um but they are still a young outfit they are still trying to make some some returns on their initial outlays and investments it's a small operation as well in the sense of they're creating small batch whiskies. They don't have a huge capacity in terms of distillation. They've got to manage their stock and price it accordingly. And in today's market, 50 to 60 quid, you could argue 70, I suppose, for some other distilleries. Again, Bimba do tend to release a couple of specials, even special editions above 100 quid. The, the underground releases were around 125. As much as I love Bimba, I didn't go for it. And I'm a Bimba club member. I didn't go for it. Because um, for me, it's, that's just a little bit too much. Just for me personally. I know they get snapped up. But White Peak, I th I'm happy to pay 55 to 60 quid. I'm also kind of bought in. I'm invested in exploring as much English whiskey as I can. I really am. And I've already sort of mentioned that, yeah, there are going to be more English whiskies on this channel. If you don't like it, then sorry, not sorry. It's just a little bit of an itch that I have to scratch. <laughs> um, like a flea-ridden dog. Um, but um, it's really, really nice, again, just going back to what I said at the start, to see how the English whiskey scene is flourishing. I've said it on, on a couple of other people's channels as well, on a couple of blog posts and a couple of tweets and whatever else. I think there's around 40 distilleries on the English whiskey map that the guys at Cooper King oversee, um, which is really cool. Ten years ago, wouldn't have seen that. It would have been two, maybe three at a push. Um, and obviously you've got St. George's now, who technically this year could well release, is it 14 or 15-year-old whiskey, I think? Um, 2007, but did they start distilling until 2009? I can't remember off the top of my head now. Uh, I could be telling a mistruth there. But it's certainly in the teens now, anyway. So, very, very exciting times. So, let's see what Wireworks Small Batch has to offer. Nice, sort of like golden peach colour in the glass. And again, slightly hazy. I'm really hoping you can see that. And this, for me, is another really good example of chill filtration not being impacted, not impacting the whiskey. And also, it could just well be the distillate itself. So it's a really nice little. It's definitely a little bit cloudy. Cool. And it's not. It's not cold down here. It's July. I'm recording this in the first week of July. So yeah, all right. It's raining. It's windy. I am in Lancashire after all. I'm not. I'm not being precious. I'm used to it. Um, but I'm in. I'm in the house. I'm in the basement. It's nice and warm. On the nose. <sighs> Ooh. Fruity, red fruit, 
like cranberries, raspberries. And I went, I kind of went with, ooh, is my first reaction because it's a little bit smokier, a little bit <sighs> chunkier than I was expecting. Admittedly, I still need to review the inaugural release. I do. And that is on my agenda. I completely forgot that I hadn't already. However, this does already differ for me. I think this is a little bit more forward with its smoke, a little bit more open about it. Probably the bottling strength as well helps. It's about 4%, I think, lower than the uh, the first release. Really nice kind of honey note. Cinnamon, tons of cinnamon in there for me. Oh, a bit of, maybe, what is it, red currant jelly or something? Well, I've already said, sort of said I'm not those red fruits, but it's still there. Probably down to the STR. Nice kind of spicy kick. I'm talking black pepper, maybe a little bit of chili. Something bready, almost yeasty in there. There's a lot going on, and it smells a little bit stronger than the 46.2. I'm not going to lie, it really does. But it's not putting me off. It's not necessarily spirity in the, in the youthful sense, although this will be youthful. You know, White Peak haven't been going that long. An English whiskey does differ from Scotch, and I think it will certainly proceed to do so in the next few years. I think the English Whiskey Guild, or something of, of that nature, I think it's going to be called, is starting to form to provide a, a kind of, I guess, more structured approach to English whiskey, a bit like the Scotch Whiskey Association does for Scotch, so the SWA. So you're going to have the English Whiskey Guild, so the OOG. Um, <laughs> and, you know, I mean, I think at the minute there's a lot of parallels to Scotch, you know, a lot of English whiskies are sort of saying like, look, this is three years old, minimum. Um, there are a couple of exceptions to that. You look at Bank Hall up in Blackpool, which is my closest distillery, my local distillery. Uh, and, and they're making American style whiskies um, of a few months, about eight months old, I think some of them are. So th there is that. I think that's the, the kind of interesting thing about English whiskies. It's, it's sort of saying now, like, why do we have to adhere to the same rules as Scotch? It doesn't necessarily mean it's lesser quality, it's just different. Like Circumstance Distillery in the Southwest, they've distilled spirits from rice. Different, different grains outside of malted barley. They're experimenting. Very, very exciting times. Just going back on there, that fruit's really coming forward for me. Cinnamon, sort of a French toast vibe, this lovely doffy French toast. Nice sort of buttery French toast. And why not? Let's drizzle it with maple syrup while we're at it with that sweetness. Mm. Mm -hmm. On the palate. Sorry guys, I normally tell you that, don't I? Ooh. Different kettle of fish altogether. So, ooh. Wow. Ginger. Ginger everywhere. So much ginger. The ginger ninja. It's like, it, it, lots of ginger. Um, it's got the heat of the ginger as well as the flavour, which is why I'm sort of like focusing on that. Very, very unexpected. Um, we've also got some of that cinnamon from the nose. We've got a bit of that maple syrup from the nose. For me, the smoke, not as prevalent on the palate as it was on the nose. Let's just go back in. Yeah, I suppose it's it's a little flourish for me right at the front. Oh, now in the middle as well, but I guess it kind of correlates with that, with that cinnamon note really, really, really well. Very, very well structured. Um, the honey's there again. The maple syrup is definitely there for me. I'm saying all these sickly notes, but it's not sickly at all. Almost getting to a very sort of like tannic, savoury structure at the back, like a kind of cured meat or smoked meat vibe. 
What I would say, surprisingly, is that my lips feel kind of sticky. And I've said that, I can't remember the whiskey that I've reviewed recently where I said something similar. I mean, obviously, whiskey shouldn't, in theory, be sticky given its alcohol content, um, given that kind of thins down that kind of stuff. But it's... It, it, it does make it feel... I want to touch my lips and sort of like wipe the maple syrup away and get sticky fingers, which sounds mad. But there's, there's kind of a very voluptuous feel about this whiskey. It's very thick, very rich. It's enveloping. There's almost a creamy element to it as well now, which I didn't pick up on the first go. That's lovely. Really, really nice. Very unique. Very, very unique. I don't think I've had another English whiskey that tastes like this. I really don't. I, you know, I've had English peated whiskey from St. George's or the English. It doesn't taste anything like this. I've had peated cask from Bimba and um, Filey Bay. Again, yeah, different kettle of fish. Same with the Cotswolds peated cask as well, actually, where their spirit has just been transferred into an ex-peated whiskey cask. Um, but this is this is lovely. This is absolutely top-notch. really is. And I can't wait to see what else comes out of this distillery and the English whiskey scene as a whole over the next few years. I'm so excited. I'm buzzing about how well these guys are doing and the fact it's so popular. I had to fight tooth and nail to get a bottle of the inaugural release. I found this, again, in, I've already mentioned in Tipples, which is great. Um, but it was well, Tipples in Manchester, which is a great little independent shop, by the way, if I've, I've, I've not already mentioned that. Um, but they're also available in Booth supermarkets here in Lancashire, which is great as well. And I, I really hope, given there's 4,000 bottles, that people buy these and open them. For me, this is not worthy of sending to an auction. I have not sent a single bottle to auction. I'm not... I'm not basically slagging off people that do, each to their own. It's your property, it's your bottles, it's your money, you do what you want with it. But I think the more people that open English whiskey and share it and spread the word and spread the vibe and, and spread the excitement, I think we're going to get some great buy-in. And I'm already hook, line and sinker, I'm all in. I'm all in. I, I even went, and I think you can see over my shoulder maybe that bottle there just on the table on, on your left hand side, my right. Um, is a nine-year-old whiskey from Hicks and Healy, which is the um, Healy's Cornish cider farm. And I, I basically just went when I was down in Cornwall just to the distillery, pure, uh, to the brewery, sorry, purely for that. I was just like, I need a Hicks and Healy. I've never tried one. And it's lovely. Um uh, it's every corner of, of the country has has its has a distillery. You've you've got London, Kent, um, you know all the southwest. You've got the Midlands now. You've got northeast Yorkshire, Lancashire, Man well, not Manchester sadly, but Lancashire. Um, you know we've got a couple up here in Bank Hall. Um, it's probably the standout at the minute, to be honest. Um, you know it's it's very very exciting. Very exciting times. And obviously, we've got Derbyshire as well, not to forget those guys here at, at uh, White Peak and the Wire Works. Just phenomenal. Well done to the to the guys at White Peak and, to, you know, all of you. Fantastic. Fantastic. Can't wait to see what else comes from that distillery. So, guys, I'm going to box it off now. Thank you very much for watching. I'm on Instagram, at Whiskey. If you like what you've seen, feel free to subscribe. But if you don't, then fine. I'm not precious. It's all cool. Thanks for coming anyway. Thanks for watching. See you soon.